Now, the first part of The Medical Detectives, a four-part series charting pioneering investigations in the field of pathology. When a cholera epidemic strikes London in 1854, the brilliant but mercurial Dr. John Snow investigates. Death in the Parish by Michael Butt Based on a documentary account by Peter Ford and Michael Howell What's wrong with her, Doctor? Could you hold the candle up, Mary, please? Thank you. She's been such a quiet little thing. Up till now. Yes, a, a bit, bit higher, Mary. Is it colic? Probably. My sister thought so, but with her being so young. What is she? Four months? It's her 18th week. I'm sorry I troubled you. That's all right. I wasn't doing anything important. Give her water. Well, if she can't keep it down. Just sips. I'll come and see her tomorrow. All right. And don't worry. I ain't worried. I want her better. Yes, of course. She's calmer now, isn't she? You've done something, Doctor. Lessons. They're so small, aren't they? Tomorrow. Yeah. See the doctor out, Jenny. All right. And thank you for coming. It's all right. More on the stairs. They're dark. People leave all sorts. You want to go? Yes, I'd say so. A better district. I've been in Soho for five years. It's a long time. The parish tires you? Yeah. You find poverty depressing? I don't find it uplifting. No, of course not. Well, I will be sorry. Thank you. Freedom is a wonderful thing, Peter. It doesn't feel that way. I go where the bishop orders me. Is that a state of childish obedience? And stay until I'm told to leave? I suppose ultimately that's up to you, Henry. Yes. I'm 30, but I feel old. The sick need experience. If experience comes with age, so be it. I envy you your contentment. <laughs> Do you? Well, I hope you'll reconsider. You'll have to excuse me, Henry. I have an appointment. Of course. Here's your coffee, gentlemen. Ah, thank you, Mrs. Riggins. Thank you. Um, your move, Peter. <laughs> You've just committed suicide. Why? Checkmate. <laughs> Sorry. What's the matter? I need a holiday. Do you? How boring. Looking at things. Just not working. I like work. What have you got against work? I don't know. You're in the wrong place. That's what I told the Reverend White. <laughs> oh, yes. He's a good man. So you've told me. Come and join me at the hospital. We'll do some research together. Are you interested in anaesthetics? No. Quite right. Puts me to sleep. Good coffee. I haven't got your brains. I'm just an ordinary doctor. You lack confidence. That's all we'll work on now. <coughs> Excuse me, Dr. Allen. There's a girl here for you. Jenny? My mum says that a baby's got the shit. You've got to come and see about it. You see, John? There you have a precise definition of my life. So, young Jenny, how are you? I'm all right, Governor. We'll sort your little sister out, shall we? Yeah. By the way, how did you know to find me in the coffee house? The Reverend Wyatt. He told me you most likely be there. Henry? Here I am. What are you doing here? Supporting you. Supporting you. Shall we go up? It's dark. We need a light. Mary! Dr. Allen? Do you have a candle there, Mary? Is Jenny with you? She's made herself scarce. Wait, then. It'll terrify her when she sees you here. No, not a bit of it. I know Mary well. There. Now you can see your way a bit. Come up. And how did you know I'd be in the coffee house? <laughs> you trundled out. I assumed you'd gone seeking the consolations of your intellectual friends. I'll go through, Mary. Is that the Reverend with you? Just a visit, Mary. See how you are. She's got the terrible shits. Sorry, Reverend. No, poor little mite. Most unpleasant. It's running out of her. I'm sorry about the state of the washing, Dr. Allen. That's all right. I don't know what I should be doing. What is it, sir, do you think? 
She has a severe stomach upset, so we just keep up with the water. Is she going to be all right? Well, we hope so. Listen to me, Mary. If she... She will get tired. But if she seems to sleep too deeply, then come for me again. In the meantime, give her this. One crystal. You see, Mary? Yeah. I can. So, every ten minutes... It's a coroner, is it? That's exactly it. So, is it important, Mary? Of course. I wouldn't go forgetting it. She's so... She's so little, sir. I know. Try not to be upset. Hmm. I'll... So, I'll give her these, then? That's right. And the water, Mary. The water, sir. Is there anyone here to help you? Not really. Your husband? Um... I haven't exactly got an husband, sir. Oh... Well, I'll ask... I'll ask Mrs. Amwell. Yes, she's good. She is. I'll send Jenny. Thank you, sir. And you, Reverend. Thank you again for coming. So, Peter, the child will probably die. Why do you say that? She has cholera. Perhaps she won't die. No, no, that's right. Uh, we'll be optimistic, shall we? Peter... If she gets through the next day... Yes. Come back for supper. I'm too tired to eat. Have you any brandy? Yes. The best cognac. A whole bottle almost. Come on, then. Peter, is it your opinion that we're going to have an epidemic? No. Not necessarily. Let's be optimistic. Yes. Oh. Give me water. You can have water when you can keep it down. Bitch! Give me water. Talk to me like that. You'll get nothing. I'm dying. Well, now, maybe. Who have we got, nurse? There's just the two here, Dr. Allen, and then those others out in the corridor. I'll see the young ones first. Doctor, this bitch won't give me nothing. I'm coming. Oh. Allen, when did you first get ill? Yesterday. You've been sick? Yes. And how do you feel? Pretty weak? Yes. Horror, isn't it? Yes. Oh, will I die? Very many people recover. Oh, I oh, don't mind. Oh, oh. could you? I, I know you're busy, but could you get someone to clean me? I'm lying in my own dirt. Yes, of course. So, nurse, you've managed to get him quiet then? Not me, doctor. He went quiet all by himself. Would you clean that poor woman, please? It is cholera. It is. How do you know? Uh, <coughs> Mr. Wiseman. We mustn't jump to conclusions. Jump? However... I didn't jump. Gentlemen. When I say jump... You meant hasty, ill-considered action. We know what you meant. Though it is surprising, Mr. Wiseman, it would be foolish to deny that cholera has come to our parish. I'm only asking to be informed what the symptoms are. Peter. Severe stomach cramp to begin with, followed by diarrhea and vomiting. Perspiration. Faint. With respect, might this not be simply a summer infection? I'm describing a prodigious evacuation from the bowels, which becomes odorless and white in colour. This is a characteristic sign of cholera. It means that the mucus lining of the intestine itself is being ejected. Do you want me to go on? No, that's all right. But, but of course, Mr. Wiseman, you're right. We, we must Peter, be sure. Peter. Thereafter, the victim shrivels in an agony of rheumatic pains. The skin darkens to black and a skull-like face. Peter, I think we've got the general picture. And is it an epidemic? So far, 70 cases have been reported to the Middlesex Hospital. The parish council's responsibilities are fairly clear. Are they? Yes. If we confine ourselves to the practical issues, are there sufficient hospital places? We have to accept that there might be a number of deaths. Where will the bodies be taken, and by whom? I suggest the workhouse in Poland Street. Their mortuary has places for 200. No, I would have thought 170. Yes, you may be right. Well, let's assume 170. In the meantime, we need to concentrate on care of the sick. I've drawn up a roster in which I've assigned certain streets to certain members of the committee. It occurred to me as well that we might need a central point for the distribution of blankets. I suggest the parish rooms, if everyone agrees. Yes? And flaming tar barrels on street corners. Mr. Wiseman? For the purposes of disinfection. Oh, very well. And lime in the gutters. You'll organise it? Yes, I'll organise it. Well, uh, <clears throat> that's excellent. Peter? We need expert medical advice. Hmm? Expert? 
I know someone. Oh, and he'd be very welcome, but I think at the moment... Henry, do we waste our energies pursuing highly speculative aims when we have our work in front of us? It wouldn't be a waste. It might be. That's my point. You're saying no. <laughs> do we want to chase every rabbit down every hole? I assume we are talking about Dr. Snow. Dr. Snow? In principle, I have no objection to expert advice. Dr. Snow. Thank you, Mr. Wiseman. But if we look to the left and right, what may happen... We lose track. We fail to take the necessary steps. We're going to end up on the ground. Let's cooperate. Let's not be tempted by the belief that any one individual can make a difference. If you think it would be an intrusion. No, not an intrusion. An irrelevance. John Snow is the foremost authority on cholera. Oh, please. It's fairly widely acknowledged. He's fought outbreaks in the northeast of England and in Lewisham. But if he's now deemed to be an irrelevance, well... Peter. Your words, Henry. And perhaps the truth is we are all irrelevant. But we must... I'm going back to my library. Good night. <sighs> Mr. Wiseman, I believe we've upset him. I don't want my time wasted, that's all. Oh, where did we get to? Um, oh, uh, blankets, I think. I'm sorry to come this late, Peter, but I didn't want to leave things. It's all right, I was working. Sit down if you want to. You finally got rid of Wiseman, then. Oh, Wiseman's a respectable fellow. Respectable? You're still angry. You should see what I see. That hospital. Exhausting for you. It's not that. At least I can go home. No, it's, it's having to watch. They brought a girl in today. Loathsome, they felt. Sixteen, I, I don't know. God, how she suffered. The worst case is, Henry, it's as if... It's as if they shrink away. Yes. You touch the flesh, it's like... Your finger marks it like putty, like the flesh of a corpse. Horrible. This one, she was so sick, one of the nurses spent the day with her. Heroic, I should say. Cradling her in her arms between those dreadful evacuations. And I saw that girl, not long before she died, whisper something to the nurse. And the nurse... Yes? Well, later the nurse told me what she'd said. Pray God you may never be in the despair I am in at this time. What do you think about that, Henry? from a spiritual point of view? No, I mean, what should we do? We should prevent such things happening to people, surely. If it's all possible, of course, of course. Take every measure. Explore all possibilities. Well, yes, we should. Ah. What? I see what you're doing. Doing? I'm not doing anything. What? Leading me via a snake path back to Dr. Snow. But for God's sake, if there's even a chance he can do something, Henry... Would Dr. Snow be willing to come and give us his advice? Yes. So, perhaps next time you're taking coffee with him? There's a lecture at the Middlesex tomorrow. He'll be there. In conclusion, I would only seek to re-emphasize my position with regard to the use of castor oil for Asiatic cholera and to restate my firm belief in Excuse the employment me. of cholera. Oh, yes. Some colleagues argue that by assisting nature in the watery areas, they are removing some of the What? Uh, I was dreaming. Uh, I want to see you. What are you doing? I want to ask you. What? Will you? Shh. Do you mind? Excuse me. My colleague here is describing to me certain experiments he has recently undertaken concerning the acidity of sheep dung. Well, could you discuss them outside? They are of vital significance. I beg you. Not to interrupt us again. Peter, you attend these debates. Very wise. How they like the smell of their own breath. Though. John, I want to speak to you. One moment, Peter. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me, Dr. Eyre. You very skillfully dismissed the groundless hypothesis, one might almost say the superstition, which chooses to see cholera as a disease of the blood to be cured by purging. When you increase the fluid loss, you are hastening the patient's death. That much all sane men must accept. Dr. Snow! I haven't finished. We are insecure. We seek reassurance. We cling to what we know. We turn backwards to the authority of the past. But it will not help us, for the night is dark. And we are far from home. <laughs> Dr. Snow, are you going to break into a hymn? Well, it will not do. It, it, it won't do. We need to gather our forces, such as they are. This is inspired. And look at the facts. We fear complexity, only reason. And the alternative, carts in the streets, piled high with bodies. Isn't that our choice? Well, isn't it? 
Well, no, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Cretins. Will you come, John? I'm right and they're wrong. I'm giving you a chance to prove it. It's Henry Whitehead's parish. Your coffee, gentlemen. Oh. Dr. Allen. Thank you. Dr. Snow. Thank you. Will the cholera be gone soon, gentlemen? Huh? Well, we hope so. You hope so? We hope, yes. Well, I've lost nine of my customers already. But hope is a good thing, I've heard. Everyone is laying down his challenge. So what shall I tell Henry? I'm very busy. I've had to stop my research. I He's interested in your ideas. Don't insult me, Peter. He refers to them all the time. <laughs> I'm sure he does. He's a very open-minded man. I'll think about it. Now I must go. I understood that you were fairly confident. I was wrong. That's all right. A man develops his views and they become a source of comfort to him, which he is reluctant to expose to the critical gaze of others. I do understand. Peter, would you do me the courtesy of shutting up? This is the Reverend Whitehead, Dr. Snow. Mr. Whitehead? Dr. Snow? A very nice house you have here? It goes with the position. Naturally, and furnished. Yes. Very good. But not sufficient reason for taking holy orders. I wasn't thinking of it, but still, it's something. After all, what's more important than a comfortable chair? <coughs> you have some help that you may be able to give, John. Or advice. Help, possibly. Advice, no. I never advise. Well, Dr. Snow, will you help, then? What has Peter told you I could do? He said you had some particular expertise. He wasn't specific. We're doing all we can here, but you have some views, which... Yes. Are... Um, how many cases have you registered so far? Over 350. And deaths? About 100. More, perhaps. And all in your parish? Yes. You see, that's interesting, isn't it? Why is it remaining within the boundaries of a particular parish? We haven't thought about it in that way. Can you help us? Will you promise me that you won't expect miracles? Well, because I'm a clergyman. No, because you're a human being, and... In grave situations, we have a tendency to entertain large hopes, probably an antidote to despair, and I couldn't bear the burden of it. I know myself, you see. Are you saying yes? Huh? Yes. Now, this disease, cholera, <coughs> at this time is presenting in an intense epidemic form, concentrating in a small area of the parish of St. James. Since it is unlikely to be sensitive to ecclesiastical geography, we must ask ourselves one question. Why here? And why now? Uh, would you bear with me, Reverend Whitehead, for a moment? What, what is this parish? What is it? What does it consist of? I mean, physically. Streets, uh, houses, businesses. Yes. Uh, a brewery, a, a slaughterhouse, a tripe factory, a public house, a, a coffee house. And people. Well, yes. Without people, there is no epidemic. But of course. When a disease strikes a person, ask not about the disease, ask rather about the person. What does that mean? The inhabitants of the area. Yes. They work locally? In the main. As what? You want to know about their occupations? Their labourers, shoemakers, yes. domestic servants, porters, messengers. They are people, Dr. Snow. What do you want? Everything. Random information. I would say comprehensive knowledge. What do you think facts are? They're numbers, they're symbols. They refer to other things. They make you think. They're stimulants. Their experiences out of which you may distill an answer to your overwhelming question, how and why did the cholera begin here? That's what you want, isn't it? Mary. Hello, Reverend. I come in. I do. It's quiet in the churchyard. And how are you? We're leaving. You and Jenny. That's right. To your... Sisters. No. Peckham's. Will you come back? I wonder if it'd be best not to. Why? Don't they say you should start afresh? Yes, I have heard that. Except it would mean leaving them here. Think of yourself and your other little girl. But half my family... I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I don't know what I'm doing. That's the truth. Go to your sisters. I feel like I've done... What? I feel like I've done something... wrong. I keep feeling... Why is that? Go to your sisters. Start again. For Jenny, Mary. You listen to me? Good morning. Ah, John. Uh, this is Mary, who... Sir? 
I'd better go. Goodbye, Reverend. Goodbye, Mary. I interrupted. I'm sorry. She's... She's lost a child and two sisters. Have you got something for us? I've drawn up a plan for the investigation. <laughs> investigation? Is that what you'd call it? Every local condition needs to be looked at. Here. Hmm? Oh, it says here, an examination of the soil and subsoil. Yes. But <laughs> we exclude nothing. Soil, subsoil, elevation of site, surface and ground plan, streets, courtyard, density and character of population, internal economy of houses, cesspool, house drains. Everything. But this is absurd. What is? But we have to accept everything you say. You make a net, you make it wide enough, nothing slips through. I understand the analogy. I question the method. Well, then question. Let's debate. You would defeat me. You are an intellectual. No, don't, don't be frightened of me. P Peter told me 174 people died yesterday. All I'm saying is, think of our investigation as a sort of net to catch the beast that's doing it. Beast? Suppose an animal unknown to zoology that had never been caught, that never even been seen. We'd need to identify it. First, first identify, we'd look at the damage done to its victims. We'd examine the teeth marks. Then we'd scour the streets looking for tracks. All of the streets. Peter said you could organize people. What do you want me to do? Give each of your committee a questionnaire. Divide the parish up between them. We gather the information. We identify the beast. M Mr. Askey? Yeah? My name's Reverend Whitehead. I'm from the parish committee. We're carrying out an inquiry into the cholera epidemic, and we're asking everyone in the parish some questions. May I speak to you? Do you want to come in? Sit down, Reverend. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You've been next door? I have. Of course, uh, they lost two. And uh, opposite, her husband. Yes. I lost a nephew. I'm sorry. Oh, that's my sister's son. His wife. She, she died too? No. Uh, their little girl. I'll, um, I'll ask you... And upstairs, there's a family. I need to ask you some questions about the people who have died in your family. Yeah? Beginning with your nephew. When exactly did he fall ill? Oh, that was uh, on, on the first day of the month. And? He was ill. And you nursed him? Of course we did. Where? In the bedroom. Where did you empty the slops? How do you mean? The slops, the, the body waste, where did you... In the cesspit, out the front. Ah, there's a cesspit there at the front. Yeah. I didn't know that, right. Uh, now, <coughs> the child. Yeah? I'm, I'm very sorry to be asking you this, uh, Mr. Askey. I, I don't mind. Don't make him any more gone. I know it's painful to go over memories. No, 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 no it's all right. It's just we're trying to understand. You look worn out, Reverend. Oh, don't you worry about me. Anyway, she... She died quick. When exactly was that? 2nd of September. In a day of her father going. There wasn't nothing we could do. No, I know. How old was she, Mr. Askey? Seven. Her name was Alice. If you want to write that down. She was a good girl. It's slowing down. It is. Only one burial today. Just one? Uh, Mrs. Ely. She didn't even live in the parish. Oh. Then why was she buried here? I suppose it was her request, or her son's. They run the brewery in Broad Street. She used to live here, but moved to Hampstead. And no more? No. You look tired, Henry. <laughs> That's what my parishioners keep saying to me. You've done very well. We have amassed a great deal of information. But what have we learned? Peter, what have you learned? There's a line. The disease has a perimeter. We knew that at the outset, but this makes it clear. For the most part, the disease has kept within the parish boundary. Why? Well, quite. If we could answer that, would we not be in the realm of genuine knowledge... So? What, what would that knowledge feel like? We can amass information, we can uncover patterns, but how will we know when we know? I mean, will bells toll, will choirs begin? How will we recognize? You mean a sort of revelation? Yes, yes, revelation, I like that word. It, well, let's begin, let's be very sensitive, let's inquire together, that's the thing. Doubting ourselves and each other, inquiring together, isn't that so? Well, Oh, don't yeah, accept what I say. Inquire. Where shall we start? If it was spread by a miasma of some... No. Wait, wait a minute. If it was in the main caused by bad air rising... No, the... no. No, no. I was going to say that in that case it would have spread everywhere. Soho isn't filthier than anywhere else. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. It isn't due to garbage or bad air. So what is it? We still haven't found anything that could have caused it. It's nothing obvious then. We have all these details. 
but no revelation. All right, then. What has surprised you? What do you mean, what has surprised you? What in this epidemic, what's contradicted your expectations? What struck you f forcefully? What oh, I see what you mean. Oh, uh, well, here's something. My congregation has been decimated, but this morning I was looking at them as they left the church. The average age now is about 60 and older. I thought, why didn't the cholera strike them? They're the weakest, at least in equal numbers to the younger people, but it didn't. Peter? I visited the St. James's workhouse in Poland Street. It's in the very centre of the cholera area, and its inhabitants are mainly the old and the infirm. As you point out, Henry, one would expect the weak to be struck down first. In fact, only five of their inmates died. That's one percent. Outside in the streets, the mortality was ten percent. The inmates of the workhouse? Were they cut off from infection? Far from it. Every day the dead and dying were taken there. On one night alone, 80 bodies were carried into their mortuary. Go on. The brewers in Broad Street. 70 men worked there, but not one became ill. Except for the brewer's mother. No, I said. What? She didn't live there. Presumably the victim of an outbreak in Hampstead. But there wasn't an outbreak in Hampstead. Is somebody playing with us? What? Everything that people have said about cholera is untrue. What do you mean, John? We have been told so many things which our inquiries have disproven. Example, the cholera strikes filthy houses, yet three houses in one street which had been singled out by the parochial authorities as being most worthy of commendation for their cleanliness were the only houses in that street to be struck by the cholera. Yes. Shall we conclude that cholera is attracted by cleanliness? And in another street, the only house to escape infection was the one generally agreed to be the filthiest. Is somebody playing with us? No. We are being told to free ourselves, hmm? to question all unproven assertions, to find the pattern. Yet the collar is so unpredictable. That's what everybody says. They describe it as capricious. It's because they don't understand it. They've been asking the wrong questions, just as we have. Have we? We've been looking at the sick. We've been asking why they became ill. Wrong question. Look at your aged congregation. Look at the brewers. Look at the residents of the workhouse in Poland Street. Look at everyone who lives in Hampstead except Mrs. Ely. What is the question we should be asking? Why have all these people escaped the illness? Yes. Good day, Doctor. It is. I'm almost packed. If I don't see you, Mary, I wish you happiness. And I wish you the same, sir. A new life is enviable. Would you take some water? No, sir. Um, I must get on. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. Time to indulge the flesh, Henry. Get dressed at once. Let me in. There. It's a map. Uh, indeed, Henry. Of, of the local area, the district. Forgive me, I haven't slept. You should have done. Why are you showing me this? We are going to seize the moment together. You'll take some tea? No time. John. I went home. I plotted their deaths. What do you mean? I went through the lists of the dead. I, I plotted the deaths on the map. Oh, I see. Those skulls. Yeah, I, I drew a skull on every house where someone had died of the cholera. <laughs> melodramatic. I am melodramatic, Henry. Is that a fault? No, John. Because I must have begun to wonder, to think to myself, if I show where the disease has been, then I'll also see the whereabouts of those who have escaped it. Yes, we, we discussed it. Yes. But then those skulls started to dance. Dance? I uh, at them, I was concentrating on the spaces in between them, so they were at the edge of my vision, and then they dance. seemed to, to move, yes. You were tired. I let, I let them dance. I didn't look at them. I said to myself, if I leave them alone, if I don't force myself to think about them, something will happen. Then, at four o'clock this morning, the dancing stopped. And? They showed me something. Have some tea. No, look, Henry, look! John. You're not looking. I am looking. No, you're looking at the street. It's a street map. Forget the streets. What am I looking for? What, what are you expecting? Frankly, nothing. That's right. You expect randomly placed skulls. But look. Oh. Uh, a pattern. Yes. 
It, it's a circle. Henry! They're forming... Yes, they're form yes, you see, they are distributed round a point. Yes, of course. What do you mean, of course? What a circle. So they must Look at the point. Look at the center of the circle. It, it, Henry! It's the corner of Broad Street and Cambridge Street. And what's there? Houses. Uh, no, Henry. A pump. How has this come about? Come about? You're asking me to have this pump removed. I think the evidence is at least... Insufficient. I've told you about the map, that it is quite clear the pattern of cholera deaths radiates outwards from the site of this pump. No. Mr. Wiseman... You don't understand the significance of this pump, what it means to the people who use it. What rights do they have? The water is clear to the eye and fresh to the taste. It's theirs and it's free. I'm telling you what it means to them. You're telling me it has killed them. Yes. You're telling me it is contaminated. Yes. On what evidence? The map, I explained. I shall need a good deal more than that. Henry! Hmm? Henry! Henry, Peter's ill. Peter. Peter. Uh, it's Henry. Can you hear me? Henry. You're all right. You're all right. No. No cholera. Water. Oh, you want water? No. I drank water. You... Pump. I knew. Oh, no. Ask. Ask Edie. What? Ask. Ask Edie. Take water. What? His mother. Ask. Ask. Peter. No. No. Oh, no. Even when he was dying. What? He wanted to help us find the evidence. He passed on what he could. He wanted to leave the parish. Did you know that? I talked him into staying, Henry. That's the truth. Use his death. What? Honor his death. Use his evidence. He wanted to tell you something about the brewery, isn't that it? He said he'd spoken to them. Well, what did he say? I don't know. Something to do with Mrs. Ely. The brewer's mother. Yes, I remember, of course. Her sons live here and are well. She lived in Hampstead and died of the cholera. Yes, we couldn't understand her connection to the parish. Peter must have found one. What did he actually say? Uh, ask Ely. But ask him what? I'm going to see him. I don't know what I'm going to say. His mother, she must have had the water from the pump. Yes, ask him if she did. She lived in Hampstead. I know. They have their own pump. I know. She but never came here. Ask him. Are you sure you're happy to row, Henry? <coughs> it's the least I can do, John. I brought you here. Yes, I can't think why. Are you charmed by the Thames? <laughs> I probably am. What about you? Do you think London is a sink of iniquity? If you fell in this river, how long would you live? If you were lucky, you'd die instantly. <laughs> it was a good service. Peter would have approved. <laughs> Thank you. We have them now. Do it, Wiseman's face. If you think the water from the pump is safe, then drink it, I said, and poured him a cup. Henry, we have them. Yes, they've taken the pump handle off. More than that. Our evidence, they can't ignore it any longer. They're going to try, but we've got them, Henry. You see, the beauty of it lies in the sheer weight of detail. What's the matter? Peter was a friend. Well, he would be satisfied. He was, he was a doctor. He wanted to save life. We're going to do that. What he found out is going in the report. I, they'll listen. Who? Wiseman, the others. Will they? Yes. Uh, you don't think so? How can they refute it? The evidence? Yes. The weight of it? Yes. All right, y you're Wiseman. What? I I imagine. I say, now listen, I'm just pulling plums. What? Well, well, how can he refuse them? Because his life depends on it. Nothing so grave. All, all right, I'll be Wiseman. Uh, what's this new evidence? Henry? Oh, um... Well, we, we rather think... Go on. We interviewed Mr. Reilly. Oh, yes. He... What did you say to him? We asked him about his mother, the lady who died. What of her? We were puzzled. Hers was the only case of cholera in Hampstead. Well, she must have inhaled the miasma of Soho. She never came here. But something came to her. Well, what was that? Water. Where did she get it? Do you really think this is... Finish it! Her sons delivered it to her every day. It came from the Broad Street pump. What can he say to that? Well, I, I suppose... Yes, and then we tell him about the men who worked in the brewery. Yeah, I know. Seventy men, not one case of cholera. And where did they get their water? From a well. A pump, did you say? The well inside the brewery. They didn't go near the pump. 
And if that doesn't convince him, we describe the almost miraculous survival of the most vulnerable people in the parish, the elderly of your congregation. They are alive. How? Because they take no water from the pump. They're too weak to carry it. Uh, and did their neighbours not carry it for them? No. No, a lack of charity saved their lives. And we're not finished yet. If he wants more evidence, we'll just pluck it out, take another group. The inmates of the workhouse. Do you think Mr. Wiseman considers them vulnerable? Yes, I think he probably does. Yes. And we? Yes. They survived. Almost all. Despite the proximity of the cholera dead in their mortuary, they survived. Well? They took water from their own well. And then a light will appear in his eyes, and he will fight a battle within his soul and wrestle with himself. And I shall keep my tactful silence. I hate to see a man suffer. And then he'll say, Snow, sweet Christ, it must be the pump. Henry, row me ashore. Dr. Snow. Mr. Wiseman. We have read your report. Good, because I'm... We have found it interesting. Interesting, I see. And informative. The parish guardians wish me to convey their gratitude. And its recommendations? To remove the Broad Street pump. Yes. Will need to be discussed. Wh why? Why? Why discussed? I don't understand. You wish us to act without discussion? I, I, look, you wish to you wish to discuss? Yes? Yes, then let's let's discuss. Let's let's do that. I should say that I have taken medical advice. Dr. Hassel of the Scientific Committee of the General Board of Health, oh, yes. no less, has looked at your report and been generous with his advice. Yes, he generally is. You will say that the water in the well underneath the Broad Street pump is contaminated. Yes. How contaminated? With fecal matter. And that this Fecal matter contains organisms. Yes. Which are responsible for cholera. Yes, it must be that. Must it? The, the evidence of 137 people who drank water from the pump, 80 developed cholera. Not overwhelming, surely. Ah, but of 297 who did not drink from the pump, only 20 suffered. And then you may go further afield to Golden Square, for example. Well within the cholera area, and yet entirely free from it. What do we find? Its residents all drank from two other pumps. To summarise, all those people who were victims of cholera either used the Broad Street pump because of its proximity or else can be categorically shown to have travelled to the pump because they preferred it. I mean, that's the tragedy of this water. It tastes so damned nice. Dr. Hassel accepts that the well played a part in the epidemic. Oh, good. But he rejects your idea that the water was contaminated by organisms in the way you describe. Well, fine, I don't care about that. Let him reject it, as long as you dismantle the pump. No. W what do you mean? We are not going to do that. You said you accepted it was the cause of the... No, we accept it as one of the causes. And the epidemic has now subsided. The danger is past. No, I, I, I really can't believe this. What? You're so stupid. I... If the well was a, a cause, take it out. If you don't, it'll come back. Are we? Are we stupid? I repeat, we don't accept your premise that cholera is caused by one specific organism. And even if we did, we reject entirely your assertion that such an organism contained in fecal matter would be leaking into the well. That's right. What do you mean, that's right? I mean, that's our argument, isn't it? I mean, we can argue about the presence or otherwise of microscopic organisms until we're blue in the face, but this would be something palpable, wouldn't it? I don't know what you're saying, Dr. Sir. I'm saying, why don't we dig it up? The well. Then we'd know who was right, wouldn't we? Because I'm saying there would have to be visible evidence of a leaking sewer, and if there wasn't... You'd eat humble pie. Oh, yes, lashings of it. I could throw in my hat as well. Are you agreed? Yes. Then let's go. No need. What? What do you mean? The Parish Pavings Committee has just completed exactly the kind of examination of the well that you are proposing. I have their report. Could I direct your attention to the last paragraph, Dr. Snow? It reads, The sides of the well are free of fissures or other communications with drains or sewers by which such matters could possibly be conveyed into the water. Dr. Snow? So, John, I take it they rejected your arguments. They're putting the handle back on the pump. Yes. I'm sorry. They'll be sorry. John. They'll need carts to move the dead. The mortuary in the workhouse won't hold them. The bodies will break through the walls and fall into the street, and I want to see their faces when it happens. I'd like to burn their houses down. Christ. What would it take, what, to convince them? 
You mean apart from my driving a sharp stick through their heads? <laughs> yes, apart from that. We would have to destroy their faith that the sewer has no connection with the well. If they could see excrement flowing freely into the water that people ten feet downstream are drinking. Would that convince them? No. They would say it's disgusting. They would say that. But yes. that's all. We'd have to show them how the epidemic started, wouldn't we? The primum mobile of this tragedy. That might have a certain dramatic vividness. <laughs> no, I only mean, if we could show that the sewer or cesspool into which the excreta of the first victim was poured, if we could show that that was leaking into the well... We can't do that. If you're right, if cholera is spread by contaminated water... I am right. Why are you doubting yourself? After all, it must have happened that way. A first case proximate to the well will have spawned all the other cases. John, I'm going to get the register of death. There can't be many. Why not? Can there? What's the date we're looking for? Uh, it would have to be the first few days in September. No. Uh, ah, here's one. August the 12th. Too early. Uh, um, this one. Too far away. Well, that's it. That's all. There aren't any more. But, but, but there must be. So what are we doing wrong? Well, I... Um... We are only looking where the cause of death is given as cholera. Yes, but what else? Well, well, what if there had been a misdiagnosis or some other cause attributed, a, a gastric illness or... So, um, any deaths at the beginning of... Um, yes, yes, all uh, of them. Um, here. 2nd September. Yes. And cause of death, exhaustion after an attack of diarrhoea... Four days previous to death. Exhaustion. Who wrote this? I did, of course. Y you didn't put cholera. It was the very first case. Other people see this book. I was being cautious. Didn't want to start a scare. I considered death from exhaustion not to be a wholly mendacious description. Oh, Henry. 40 Broad Street. That's right next to the pump. A daughter aged five months. You know who it was, then. Is that tea all right, Reverend? Fine, Mary. Peg and water don't taste quite the same, but you get used to it. I'm sure. Carry on with what you were telling me, please. She was so small, but had been a good girl till she was ill. She was shivering in a fever, so I wrapped her in a cloth which the poor mite saw at once. I used napkins to clean her. She stopped crying by then, so when I had a minute, I put them in pails of water. By now she was quite still and somehow looked even smaller, as though she was newborn. So that way I knew she'd die soon. And she did. So there was nothing left for me but to clear up. And I poured the water from the buckets partly into a sink in the backyard and partly into a cesspool at the front and washed the cloths I'd wrapped her in and washed her little body too and kissed her once just the once, and say goodbye to her. Why are you asking me all this, Reverend? They're worried about the money, the cost of the inquiry. <laughs> what do you expect? Gratitude? No, but a penny pinch at a time like this. We proved them wrong. We took their treasured beliefs and we said cholera is not a disease visited on the lower classes as punishment for their laziness. It is a waterborne illness that strikes the clean as well as the dirty. Are they going to thank us for that? <laughs> and we caused them to look again at the evidence and to dig up the well and there, lo. A drain system so rotten it is allowing human slurry to seep straight into the roots of their precious pump. Are they going to say, well done? I can't triumph, John. I'm not. I'm thinking of the 700 who died in our parish, including Peter. And I know the cholera will return. Until London has clean drinking water, yes. But we've done something, surely. Haven't we? Coffee, gentlemen? Ah, Mrs. Riggins, may I say how well you look? Oh, I suppose you may. Oh, is something wrong, Reverend Whitehead? No. No, I'm very well. Thank you, Mrs. Riggins. In Death in the Parish by Michael Butt, the cast was as follows. Dr. John Snow, Bill Nye, the Reverend Henry Whitehead, Nicky Henson, Dr. Peter Allen, 
Peter Capaldi, Mr. Wiseman, David Glover, Mary, Ruth Sillers, Mrs. Riggins, Marlene Sidaway, Mr. Askey, John Hollis, Jenny, Kate McHenry. Death in the Parish, a production from the Fiction Factory, was directed by John Taylor. And in tomorrow's episode of The Medical Detectives, two ambitious young doctors tackle a yellow fever epidemic in 19th century Cuba.